Okay, so let's start over with um, Biomet. So you just open the Biomet application from the headquarter. And what you of course need, to, if you do this example on your own PC, is to download the data from our um, .info website, which just mentioned. And we can just open the folder. And of course, to do our, a simulation of thermal comfort, you always need a final finished AmbiMet simulation. So without a pre-calculated microclimate results from AmbiMet, of course, it's not possible to, to do any um, thermal comfort simulation, just like for UDCI or PET or whatever, it's the same thing. So um, the important thing is that we also need the INX file that is um, coming with the model. So otherwise it will not be possible to define routes and points just, just as mentioned. So if you open the folder and you have, you see you have a number of um, predefined um, time slices. So I've just picked some of the original 24 hours simulation because otherwise the package will be really much too, too big. And so I think we will go to the um, 14 o'clock, the uh, 2 p.m. situation in the afternoon. So we select that from the data file map and then select dynamic thermal comfort and just press the button. And this will move the Biomet model into the um, thermal comfort, dynamic thermal comfort too. But before it takes some time, so it has to download all the data to uh, get the air temperature, the radiative temperature, the wind speed, the wind vectors, and everything from the model into the memory. So just give it a, a small time to do that. So here we are in the dynamic thermal comfort module. Everything is loaded and um, you see a brief overview over the INX file, just like on, on the entry page of the Biomet model. We can zoom in at any time. And you can also overlay different information. So for example, you have an information about the um, air temperature. And just to give you an overview of what's actually ha happening in your model. So if you go to the simulation tab, you can also um, have the legend for the um, color distribution. Or, for example, you can have a look at the um, information about the mean radiant temperature. So um, you can see everything that is um, necessary for the calculation of um, bioclimate data is stored in the model. So air temperature, wind speed, mean radiant temperature and specific humidity. So let's turn off the data because um, otherwise we won't see anything. But what you also see are these little dots. So these are the points, the routing points, which I have just mentioned, which have just entered in our um, INX file using the spaces editor. And when we go to the edit root tab, we see a list of all points we have just added. So I can select points here and to see there's a bus stop, this is the Broadway point I've just added and so on. So what we need to do now is to define a walk. So where this walk begins, where this walk ends, this is completely up to you. So I will introduce or I will suggest the following walk just as an example. We start here at the metro station and then walk over to the other side of the street and then we make a small visit to the park. Walk over using the path through the park. Visit the child's playground here. Make a small stop at the, at the restroom here and then return. Walk over to the bus stop and leave the model area. So. I will define a new walk to say just a new route. There's already one route inside, so we just add another one. Call this visit to park. I can give it a, a different color. So if I do have several routes in my model area, so I will be able to identify which route is which. And what we see now here is just the starting point at the metro station. And I use the right mouse button and I say, insert this point into my route visit to park, which is empty right now. So it doesn't matter if I insert or append. So this is a lot of difference at this time. So my first point is set. So I need a second point. I walk over to the other side of the street. Again, select this one, metro one, the other side of the metro, I append it. And so you see 
that the first section of my route has been established. So I will add this point. I'll just hit that one. And now what I want to do is to walk along this path and to make things much more easier for me, I will have another zoom factor so that I have a better chance to hit the grid points. And also what I can do is to um, turn on the different surface types I do have in my model. So the orientation is much more easier because at the moment I just see a vegetation and, and buildings, but I don't see uh, where the roads are. So I go to the model display option and select surface types. And then I get an idea where are the different types of surface. So I'm not walking just across the Broadway all the time, keeping on the, the tracks of the park, for example. So there are some um, control points missing because I just wanted to walk really over the, um, the path and not just over the green fields. So I just can add several points, for example, a new marker here. I just have no, this have no meaning. I just give them numbers. Marker one, another marker here, marker two. Then I walk over to the other side of the street at marker three. And now I can add these points to the root. Append, append. Hand. And so I will continue to add some more points to finally get to my first location, which should be this location here. This is, uh, we can move over here, the pine bank. So I will just add some more points to that one. So I have designed a little uh, walk through Central Park, which actually now has the length of 1.5 um, kilometers. And if we walk this line um, straight, we would take about 20 minutes with an average walking speed of 1.34 meter per second to pass this route. You see, I have added quite a number of control points here. So this is because these paths around the park are quite curvy, so I needed some number of control points. These are these points M2, M3, and so on, and so on. So these are just marker points, just as I mentioned in the video before, earlier in this video before, um, that the marker points are stored in the INX file, but they do not have any impact on the simulation. So this is why you do not want to have these control points as receptors, because we do not want to have um, detailed receptor information for all of these points. So let me shed um, the light on two special um, aspects. So these are all the routes which are in, in the model right now. And I have one special idea or have one special thing I would like to have in this route. So this is the playground for the, for the kids here. So this is actually this point here, point, route point number 23, which is on the playground. And what I want to do is that at this point, um, uh, we stay for a while outdoors and let the kids play. So I select this point, so either I click on it or I click on it on this list. This has the same effect. And I go to point info. And in this dialog, I can have some properties. And one of the properties I would like to change in the moment is the standing time to say, okay, when the agent reaches this point, this point, he will stay there for a given time. So I can enter the time. So I say half an hour. So as it is in, min in seconds, it's 1,800 seconds. So he will rest there for that time. And after this half an hour is passed, he will continue or she will continue on the walk. And the second special should be this location here. These are the restrooms. So I would just take this as an example for an, an indoor location. It's the same thing. So it's the next point after the playground location. Again, I check, uh, I click the, the info box. And now I say it's an indoor location. So the model knows when I enter this point, um, I will also be there for some time, say 10 minutes. So this would be 600 seconds. 
but this is an indoor location, so I will not be exposed to the outdoor condition, but I can set up an indoor temperature. So let, let us assume this is a very cool um, bathroom, um, restroom, so I just have to 50, 15 degrees of air temperature, and of course no re radiative temperature and no wind movement. So this is an indoor location. And you see this indoor location is also marked with a blue spot so that we see in our, our model history or in, in our walk that we can distinguish between um, indoor and outdoor locations. Okay, so almost everything is finished here. So our walk continues. Um, we leave the park here on the western side and then uh, the final destination will be the bus stop at the end where we leave our model. So practically we are ready to run, so we could switch over to the simulation tab. But there is just one thing we have to keep in mind. Um, just like any simulation, um, we need a boundary condition. So what is my state of body? What is my body condition when I enter the model? Because the model does not know about this. So when I go to simulation settings tab here, we have actually um, several options. So the first option I can check or not check is um, do I start with static thermal conditions? So even if we are talking about dynamic thermal comfort for the starting condition we can assume or we can select that we start with a static skin temperature and a static core temperature. So for example we leave um, the metro at our starting point. So we came with the metro and in the metro it's not too warm, it's not too cold, so it depends. So I can say I use my own microclimate. I say the air temperature inside the metro is 20 degrees. And so is the mean radian temperature because there is no sun in the metro. And say the wind speed may be 1.5, uh, 1.0 meter per second and a specific humidity normally, I say it's just 10.0 gram per kilogram air. And I check start with static thermal condition. That means before actually my agent starts the walk, um, his skin temperature will be iterated so long that it has a static condition fitting the starting condition, 20 degree air temperature, no sun, wind speed is 1.0 and so on. So this is the starting condition and especially for smaller or for, for shorter walks, this starting condition of course is extremely ex important because if you walk just 500 meters you will more or less never lose your initial condition when you started the walk. So this walk is much longer so the starting condition will have less an impact but we'll see it has an impact and it takes some time to adapt. So choose a relatively good starting condition which you think matches the condition in your model area. You can also say just use an average data. So that means that we use average air temperature, average radiation, radiative temperature and average wind for the model. So if this is finished, we can close that one and say run. So go to the graphics tab and run interactively. So these are the two options. Run interactively means we can watch the agent walking. Run direct is the same thing but without any graphical interference. So if you want to have uh, several test walks, different climate conditions and so on, you can press the run direct button because this is much, much faster because there's no graphical feedback. But for the moment, we would like to have a graphical feedback where the agent starts the walk at the metro and here we see all the information about the actual skin temperature, um, the core temperature, the sweat, the sweat rate, and the same is monitored here. We can see the skin temperature, the clothing temperature, the core temperature as he, in this case it's in he, um, walks through the model environment. We can see at the top the local climate condition he is just in at the moment. So this is the radiative temperature, this is the air temperature, this is um, the wind speed, the relative wind speed, and this is the um, specific humidity. Uh, why relative wind speed? Of course we do have the wind vectors and it of course makes a difference if I walk with the wind in the same direction as the wind so our speed will not subtract, our speed will be actually um, be less than the speed of the wind because when I walk with a speed of 2 meter per second and the wind is 3 meter per second 
coming from the same direction where I walk, the relative wind at my body will only be the difference between these two wind speeds. That means one meter per second. If I walk opposite to the wind with two meter per second and the wind comes with three meter per seconds into my face, actually the relative wind speed at my skin will be five meter per second because of the wind vector and my movement vector actually add on. So here we have the information about the um, scores, cause of the skin temperature. Red numbers means that the skin temperature is rising. We have an information about the wets, uh, the sweat rate and the proportion of the wet skin. So it's pretty hot here. As we have seen before, the park is pretty hot at this location. Here we can also see different information, for example, the water balance of the agents. So what is about the sweat rate? What is the um, thermal comfort rate? We can have a look at the energy balance to see the different components or have a look at the DPAT value. So this is the, the red curve and here you see the difference. So the um, lilac curve, this would be the calculated value for the static pad. So this would be the value from the, the chart I have just shown you. And you see there is a, a clear difference of course, the dynamic pad, so the actual thermal sensation of the agent does not change that fast because it takes time until the skin temperature reaches some equilibrium state. Um, so if we walk into the cooler spaces, it will not immediately drop down. And if we walk into the hotter space, it will not immediately um, raise. So now we are approaching the child play playground where we have scheduled a 30 minute stop to let the kids play. And here, of course, we see here's a small marker to see the agent is standing. And what you see as well here is that now the static pet, so the situation that has been calculated with the classic static indicator is pretty much the same now as the D-pet. So this body is more or less in a stationary case. And this is what we can expect because we are standing now for 30 minutes at the same location. So now our transient space state, our dynamic thermal comfort approaches the static thermal comfort. So let let us pass some time to wait until these 30 minutes have passed and see what's going on then. So now we have uh, reached the uh, final time. You see the skin rate is the skin temperature is not really changing anymore, and also is deep at not changing anymore. So now it's time to move on and go to the restroom. And where we're suddenly changing into an indoor environment, and you see the dramatic change, the dramatic drop in the skin temperature, a very fast drop, and you see how the dynamic pad they felt experience also changes during the time in this indoor location. And if we go for the energy balance, we also see that there's a, a very dramatic change, a very dramatic drop in the energy balance down to a minus 200. So um, this would be a very unpleasant um, feeling or a very pleasant, it really depends. So it really will have a, for this person a very cool impression running with this hot skin into this cool environment. So let's see how this cooling point on this standing in this cooling time will have an impact on the skin temperature. And what does it of course mean? We are talking about an outdoor condition. What does it mean for the continuation of the walk after being inside this um, bathroom for some minutes? So we have reached the final time. So you see the sweat rate has almost gone down to zero. Wet skin is going down because I'm um, standing in this environment. It's no, it's no reason to be um, cool anymore. There's no reason to um, sweat anymore. So the agent is somehow gone here, um, but we can tr still trace him here on, on the environment. So we are back in the outdoor environment, back um, now a little bit in the shade, but then walking through the sun. And again, we have a dramatic change and dramatic increase in skin temperature. 
and the sensors of the skin will say, oh, wow, this is a very hot environment I am in right now, just because the, the change in the energy balance and the change in the skin temperature is so dramatic at this very moment that the impression after this small, this short stay in the indoor environment, the cool indoor environment, will result in a very, very hot experience of an outdoor climate that haven't been maybe experienced that hot before. So we go to the D-pad again. We see how this D-pad now goes back to approach the original pad. And you also see that even in the shade now, the feeling, the sensation of the virtual pedestrian is much hotter than the original pad would have been. So this is almost the end of the road. The route, the um, agent is now reaching its final destination and um, the files are written and they're ready for analysis now.